Hello and welcome to this new lesson in GIS 101. We will talk about projections today. In one of our last videos, we have already explored what could be a projection all about. So it's defining how to see the world on your screen. Due to the fact that the world is not flat, obviously, um, we need to make sure that we have this orange and we can place it on on a table, right? And this does not come without distortion. And therefore, GIS comes into place, which helps us to see the world on a flat plane. Now, for the time being, we were only using a CRS, a coordinate reference system. In our case, it is the EPSG code 4326 which says, okay, we are using an idealized shape of the world called um, the WGS84 spheroid. And um, we are addressing each point on this sphere with the coordinate that has a latitude and a longitude. So for this example, we are using here world.qgs in the world folder in our example, the exercise data. Now you can see, well, there are, this seems to be the world, right? Um, but obviously, it is not always like it seems. So let's switch. Is, uh, you might have seen the examples from the web. How big is Greenland, right? So if I'm just switching the, pro the projection from this EPSG 4326 to something called 3857, which is called Pseudo Mercator. You know this uh, this um, reference system, or oh, I haven't changed it. You know this uh, reference system from Google Maps or Bing Maps or whatever. So you can, you might have seen this before. So this looks, or this is the world in WG in World Mercator. Look how big Greenland is, right? So what is the real shape and what is the real size of Greenland? And there projections comes into place in your idea so as an intro i really recommend you to read out the um this example here map projection detail uh, all about coordinate reference system in the gentle introduction to gis on uh, the qgis.org website it's still in the version 2.2 but of course it is a gentle introduction to gis so we are not um, here for the latest hits but because the main concept has not changed at all so um um yeah this is more or less still the same right so this can be used and um in this project world qgs we have all the continents you can see them here looks just fine let's switch back to wgs84 and zoom down to south africa and you might have seen those glitches here in the presentation do you remember the last session where we talked about topology you have any idea what's happening here of course the polygons are not located to each other let's check out with the identify tool there's one polygon, there's another polygon, what's inside? Yeah, nothing. There is nothing inside, right? And that's, a, that's an issue. So, but we will not take care of this now because we would like to talk about projections, right? So let's zoom back again to South Africa. And let's have a look here on the scale bar. I'll set this to small scale. And when I'm zoom uh, when I'm panning I'm not zooming you see that the scale is changing and that's uh, that's something we have seen already in one of the last videos so this represents every point with latitude and longitude and I will now add another layer to to my project here and this layer is called rsa.shp which is the we are somehow the municipalities of south africa let's have a look here or we will hoover over the over the layer there's something called epsg 3410 and the continents are placed here in 4326 
So what QGIS is doing is it, it knows the EPSG codes, it knows the projection parameters of those EPSG codes, and it's reprojecting it on the fly. So if there is a valid projection and QGIS knows it, it will apply it automatically. And that's quite good. But you can also export those layers with a different projection system so it is able to reproject your shape files, geographical data, whatsoever. In this opinion, or in this occasion, we will not explore, uh, export it as an S3 shape file. We will use a new, new, more or less new standard. It's called GeoJSON. It's quite heavily used in the, in, the, in the web mapping area. And so we will sell a GeoJSON 4326. Go with this. Save it. We'll go with eight decimal numbers. And the CRS, I've already mentioned it in the name, should not be this one very special local grid um, or global grid we will use 4326. There it is. Just press an OK. Now you see it's already or it's added again to the to the uh, to the layer tree and it is obviously uh, on the exact same location. But let's have a look at the at the exported to um, on the exported data set right so let's go to the qgis training data own data where is it own data and to the file there it is open with atom please I'll just drag and drop it would take now some time but there it is so we have here the presentation of the name and here is the presentation of our epsg so the coordinate reference system you can see that the coordinates are proper w wgs 84 coordinates like we used to see them what's now what i will do now i will take the same layer export save features as geojson again RSA underscore GeoJS underscore. Let's go with 34S. What does this mean? 34S, we will have a look here at this um, CRS selector and just type 34S. What is this? We will take here the WGS 84 UTM zone 34 south. The uh, a WGS 84 UTM zone. So have a look at this representation here in the QGIS documentation where we have uh, different ways of projections. And the WGS UTM uh, presentation is this projection here where we have a cylinder placed above the earth and the sides of the cylinders are meeting the earth at different longitudes. In this case, it is the longitude um, between, let's say, 28 and 34, something like that. I don't know. So look whether we can see it in the, in the WKT presentation but it's not there. So we do have an open question about this presentation. There's an EPSG code 32734. Let's have a look on epsg.io 32734. Just click on search. Area of use between 18 degrees east and 24 degrees east south and hemisphere between 80 degrees south and equator onshore and offshore so there's a lot of other or a lot of additional information and you can get more information about the uh, about this epsg code on epsg.io quite cool site very easy to handle so press on okay we will not use this here we will use the this epsg code it's okay once again it is exported let's open this up again 
and now the coordinates have changed right they are still the same point on planet earth but we are now saying well first of all there is a longitude value which means we are 460 kilometers from the western side of that shape of that of, of that rectangle from the UTM zone and we are 7178 kilometers south of the equator so this is something different but um, UTM zones are quite important if you would like to measure locally areas distances and whatsoever um, so therefore these projections are really a really important fact so now let's change the projection from the whole project to something different we will go with which is not latitude longitude based but is a projected reference system with this number epsg 6933 person okay now you've changed now you see that the the difference in the projection and this really means something for you on a category uh, on a cartographic way right so if you would like to show your data always make sure to use a proper um proper projection and we see now also another issue here so when we are dealing with geometries what is this gray arrow here right so there's a gray space so the projections is always take a look twice okay so we have here some items where i can identify the continents right here in iceland as an example but if i if i click here there should be something due to the grayish color but it is just a malfunctioning display or tra malfunctioning translation from the world's dot uh, continents shp layer to this current map window map canvas so you need to remember there are coordinate reference systems it's hard to make measurements in them especially due to the fact that they are not meter based they are based on degrees and then there's projection or projected reference systems like the utm system where you can measure in meters and you can um, calculate areas and stuff like that but um, once again, you are, if you're doing it on a bigger scale, there are some other pro problems. Please read the documentation here in the um, gentle introduction to GIS. Now, let's open up a new project. We will not use the rsa.shp, but we will now add the oceans layer here. These are the oceans and what we will do, we will assign a new projection to it. I'm going to settings and custom projections. What we will do, we will name it van der Grinten 1 and we will assign a definition string here. This, uh, so we need to fill in or copy paste the projection parameters and just press OK. Oh, there is an EPSG code for this already in projection. So let's have a look here. 53029. Van der Grinten. There it is. Now, completely different uh, presentation of theirs. Quite entertaining. And this is uh, the Van der Grinten one. With this um, idea was now just to show you, okay, if, if there is not your projection already listed in the very long list of projections available, you can always assign a, a custom projection exactly for your um, question. And if you would like to have an overview about the projections, you can also use this very entertaining site from Mike Bostock, where he has nice presentations of quite a lot of projections and how they will look like in on a flat plane, right? So you can uh, have a look at the code, but you can also just play around, print them, and whatso whatsoever you would like to do with that. 
Um, but coming back to the question, okay, what projection should I now use, right? So now we are here with the EPSG 53029. It really depends on your on your usage scenario. I would say, well, if you're working on measuring and local data, it's quite a good choice to use UTM. If you're on worldwide data, I will always stick to the 4326 projection system otherwise you well you are interested in such a pre presentation where you have a big overestimation of uh, the of antarctica but as said it really depends on your on your on your problem on the way what you would like to communicate and if you have any question i will also refer or point to this article here uh, on the ArcGIS block from S, we're measuring distances and areas when your map uses the Mercato projection. Quite a lot of people use this web Mercato also for their everyday tasks. So they are using this one, right? 3857 WGS Pseudo Mercato because you can somehow measure in it. Well, not exactly, but you can. Um, so It is an ugly one, but it's still commonly used, especially for map products and in the web um, web interfacing and stuff like that. So just ask yourself twice, what projection would I like to use? Do I really need projected reference systems or can I use with the non-projected so uh, as a coordinate reference system? And uh, be careful in your choice. Thanks again for watching. Take care and goodbye.